Riverside Park was a place that my family and my friends, we would spend a lot of summers at. We would just go fishing or swimming and, you know, play on the playground. When the 2013 floods came through, a bunch of crude oil was spilled into the plat, and, and now it's all fenced off and boarded up. There is like one access point, but you know, I wouldn't recommend going in there. My father actually passed away a few years ago, and that was our fishing spot. So for me, that's just like a big piece of my childhood that I can't really get back. And it's just another example of how oil and gas has come in and destroyed pieces of this community that matter to people. Oil and gas development along the Front Range of Colorado is uh, mostly occurring up in the northeastern part of our state. And at the same time, the population's been growing very rapidly. So as these two events are occurring at the same time, there's been more and more wells and people being located together. I walk outside my door, I see an oil and gas well. I go past my old high school. There's an oil and gas well driving through neighborhoods. It's by people's homes. It's literally everywhere. I'm a mom of the student that comes to Baylor Romero Academy. Uh, my son's currently in the K3 campus, so that's going to be a quarter mile down the road, and currently we are at the 4-8 campus. Um, right behind me, they are putting up the sound wall for the site for 24 wells. And from the school property line, it'll be about 680 feet. With the extraction of oil and gas, hazardous air pollutants can be emitted, and these are things like benzene and hydrocarbons. Benzene's a known carcinogen. Uh, hydrocarbons are known to have uh, respiratory effects, cardiovascular effects, and neurological effects. My biggest concern about being so close to oil and gas wells is the air quality. According to the American Lung Association, Weld County has an F for ozone air pollution. I really, really worry about benzene, which has been linked to cancer. I worry about explosions. I don't even really know where to start because there's so many concerns. Well, we're particularly concerned about the health impacts in children because they're smaller and also children's immune systems aren't as well developed as adults' systems. And finally, children are growing, whereas adults aren't. So it's affecting a growing system, which can also have impacts that adults might not experience. You never want to have your children in a position where they're at any kind of risk of getting hurt. For me, this is a huge risk. Although there aren't very many studies that show what exactly the effects are. They're carcinogens being breathed in by children. So the fact that that's legal, just as a parent, just terrifies me. When we do environmental studies, we can't really put people in a laboratory and control all things. So it's, it's very hard for us to get a cause and effect, but we can continue doing these studies and get better answers. A lot of people will ask me, well, why do you stay in Greeley if you're so concerned about your health? Why do you live right next to a massive site like this? And to be honest, for me, it's, it's an income thing. You know, I'm a single mom, I'm low income, I'm a, I'm a graduate student. I don't have the means to just pack up or even just move the next city over. I've noticed that communities that seem to have a lot of means and um, a lot of access to education have seemed to be able to negotiate the terms of de the development around them. And I'm not sure if that's true in communities that don't have those resources. Belo Romero is 89% Latino. 92% of the children here qualify for free and reduced lunch. So it's not um, a very affluent school in any sense of in any sense really. In the time we've been conducting rallies at Bel Air Marrow, I've handed flyers to just about every parent picking up their child and 
they've always been super thankful to see people out there protesting what's happening but they're afraid to do it themselves. A lot of the time marginalized communities just don't feel like they have a voice and so before they even start they already feel defeated. With the ability to go after more and more resources uh, we don't know who's going to be exposed in the future. I think a lot of people are living near this that never thought they would be living near this. They're rather surprised. And we also should be uh, concerned about it because what happens to part of our population affects all of us and our costs for medical care and productivity with um, our population and, uh, and what our future is going to look like.